Hey guys, my name is Stefan and I'm a freelance electrical engineer from Denmark. And this channel is Revis Consult Tutorials and it has weekly video uploads about software in the building industry. And if you're new on my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any uploads. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use some of the most common measurement tools in Bluebeam Revo. This is a step-by-step -step video, so make sure to stay until the end because there we're going to have a look at a very cool measurement tool as well. So let's dive into it. When we have our PDF open in Bluebeam, the very first thing we're going to do is to calibrate the measuring tool and set up the scale and units in the measurement settings. Go to measurements and type in the scale from your sheet. Usually you have a scale, for example, one to hundred, and then you would just type it in. But let's say you have a drawing with almost no details. But we still have the square meters though, which is enough information. Then we can just type that in for calibration. Let's use this room, for example. I will assume that this wall is two meters and this one is 70 meters because 70 times two is 140 square meters. For calibration, in this example, we need the X and Y coordinates. We also need to set the precision to one decimal so we can be more precise. Click on separate vertical scale and now click on calibrate X scale. Select two points to calibrate measuring tool. If you zoom in, you can see that it snaps to the inside corner. Now you're going to enter the measurement 2 meters. Click OK. Go ahead and calibrate the Y scale. Now that you have calibrated the measuring tool, you'll want to make sure that you did it correct. Let's measure the room by selecting the area tool and set the precision to 1, because we don't want any decimals in this case. Go to one of the corners, click and drag the selection to the opposite corner and you will now see if you did it correct or not. This was an example of how you can calibrate and set the scale if you don't have it on the sheet. Now, let's talk about the actual topic of this video. Now I'm going to go through the most common measurement tools. The first one is length, and we can use it for marking up a length of a wall, for example. You can change the font size, color, and more in the settings up here. The area tool can be used in several ways. You already measured an area before by clicking and dragging the selection from one corner to another. You can also add points by clicking on each corner, which I'm going to do now. The polylang tool is used for measuring multiple segments. and it will also give you the total length. You can also measure a diameter. You can also measure angles. And you can measure a radius. You can measure a volume if you want. You can count several markups in your document. I'm going to explain this in another tutorial. The cutout tool is really useful for measuring complex areas. Let's say that you have an area with objects that you want to exclude in the measurements. Let me show you how.
And now I want to show you the really cool measurement tool that I talked about earlier in this video. It's called Dynamic Fill. And basically, it is really helpful for filling out areas with curved walls and so on. The other tools makes it a bit hard to get it right. So let me show you how. I'm going to use another sheet for this example. And here we have a room with a curved wall. So let's go to the Dynamic Fill in the Measurement tab. Here we have the Boundaries option, so we can set boundaries when we fill out a room. I'm going to show you exactly how later. Here we have the bucket to fill out the area. Here we can delete it. And here we have the settings. Here we can decide what we're going to use the dynamic fill for. We can create spaces, polygon markups, area measurement, polylink, perimeter, and volume measurements. Usually I keep things simple, so I'm going to show you how we can measure an area by filling out a room and add a boundary to it. Click on Area. Go to Fill and start filling out by holding down the left mouse button. Click Apply when you're done, and you have now measured the room. Let's now say that we want to have this area included in the measurements. What we can do is to set a boundary. Usually, the boundary size is too big, so go to Settings and set it to 25%. Click to set a starting point and then double-click it to set the boundary. And again, we can fill it out. What you've learned in this video is to use Bluebeam's measurement tools. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this and don't forget to like this video. Thank you for watching and have a good one.